is that the fact of they did have a professional cleaning come in the next day. But one of the things noted by some of the first police officers and the maids that were in there first was two sets. Like, you know how you get the towels? Right, you get yeah, towels, towels. You extra get towels. towels. Request extra towels. You're gonna need them. Right, you get you, you get a couple towels, a couple face towels, a yep. couple uh, butt towel. you know, square towels. You need a butt towel. Yeah, yeah, you know because that towel. toilet yep. paper's hard. Yeah, yeah. you need butt right? towel. After a while, you you're there for any amount of time, mm. right? You, you need a wet towel. Yeah. Uh, if <laughs> you need a butt towel. But they noticed that there was two of the of the hand like the hand or face towels like the medium towels like you wouldn't, yeah, you wouldn't yeah. dry your body with two of those medium ones were on the ground and they had looked like they had been used to try to start cleaning up the blood on the floor right like they had been wiped through the blood there was kind of blood streaks and then they were just kind of tossed in the corner like dirty laundry why would and that was noticed by the... That's not suspicious So if you're going to kill yourself, why would you even bother mopping up any of the blood? How, how would you even be... Why? How would you even be able to? Here's my thought. This is my thought process on that because there were so many wounds. Usually when there is somebody who... When they do uh, slit their wrists, there is usually a few hesitation slices, right? You don't really get to do... You don't do the entire job and maybe... Did a couple slices, changed his mind, maybe tried to clean him up potentially, and then went back to the bathtub, changed his mind. I find that highly unlikely, but that's the only way in my brain that that. Unless there was someone else there. Absolutely. Well, well and they got blood on them, like, it, right? Yeah. That just that just that kind of just paints a different picture because when you say like, oh, he did all this in the bathtub, well, then it goes to the point of like, well, no, there was actually quite a bit of blood on the wall. And the bathroom floor, which means he would have started the cut while standing outside of the bathtub. Well, it depends. It, it depends it if he hit, like it if he hit an artery. Injected. There's going to be an art, yeah. arterial spray, right? Yeah. And he he must have because he if he got to the tendon on a few of those yeah, cuts. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Well, and he did it the yeah, right. He, he like he did it the he right went way vertical. as well. Yeah. Which a lot yeah. of people don't. So do, don't what? Don't uh, do it, don't, don't. What well, what was don't. with Le, no. What did you have another interesting fact about Lascrae? I mean, the the two towels to me were pretty fucking damning right there. Like, that's that's yeah. super bizarre. The fact that the cleaning company felt like they were told everything's good, so they tossed these towels away. They disposed yeah. of them. Things, fucking evidence. Yeah, they cleaned Gonzo, everything. Right? And the, just the fact, like, it's crazy to me that this place was professionally cleaned, and they didn't even do a secondary... First of all, they didn't do the autopsy, and they didn't do a secondary uh, investigation of the scene until after it was fucking cleaned. And everything's gone. Like, what? What are you gonna? Carpets are shampooed, walls are scrubbed, bleached. Yeah, everything. exactly. Like deep cleaned. You know what I mean? There's gonna be nothing left in there. You want to know something that they did find, though? Yes. You want know, something, something, something they did find? I found one. You, I want to. You want to know? I found to know. So we're gonna get into the fact that Danny was rumored to have a certain set of documents with him, which were not found mm. with him. We're gonna touch on that, but they did end up finding something. They did find. A scrap piece of paper rolled up and tucked into one of Danny's shoes. Mm. All right. The little piece of paper that was tucked in his shoe contained an outline for a chapter of the book that he was writing titled Behold the Pale Horse. There's another book called that. That's not this. There's a popular one written in the in the nineties. This is this, not it. This a was huge his own conspiracy book. book, Behold the Pale Horse. Exactly. This is not that one. This is his own conspiracy book. So this was supposed supposedly the final chapter. Of his book, which read, chapter on 1980, terrorist underground, Afghanistan, Middle East, Iran, John Philip Nichols, after arrival, Indian Reservation, Fred Alvarez, Paul Mascara, Philip Arthur Denson, Fresno, Hercules, Bill Kilpatrick, The Big Tex, Ricano, San Francisco, finish up chapter with Paul M. and Fred A., all right, so we're gonna it's a web of people exactly, and right away we'll talk just just on two guys. He says finish up the chapter on Paul M and Fred A. Well, Fred Fred A is Fred Alvarez, who was the vice chairman of the Cabazon Tribal Council. All right, well he was that prior to his death, which was execution style murder. Okay, Paul Mascara was appointed to run that same tribes casino 
and died six months after Alvarez murder. 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 That's what they did find. Well, goddamn. All right. Well, so I just said before we get that just sets it up. Before we get into any further, I I gotta use the facilities and I need a a quick refill. Gonna grab a beer. Don't have a bath. Don't have a bath. bath. We're back. So one of the things we kind of briefly touched on in this hotel room was that there was some sort of notes or something that weren't found there. Well, one of the other things, and we, me and Zell know this firsthand. This guy was an investigative journalist. Investigatory. And he carried with him. Investigatory. investigatory journalist. He carried with him all his notes from this story he was working on, this huge story. And if he's As anything like George Knapp, if he's anything like George Knapp, papers on papers, baby. Me his and Zell life witnessed. work is in his briefcase. Yeah, me and Zell witnessed George Knapp going through like a thousand loose leaf papers, you know, just tossing shuffling, them around shuffling, in the middle shuffling, of public. Shuffling, shuffling. It's like trying to make loose connections and shit. And it sounds like Danny was kind of the same. <clears throat> Oddly enough, every all accounts, by all accounts, he had all his research with him on this trip. And he'd been working on this story for over a year. His his maid actually witnessed him pack it all with him before he left from Hertensburg. Now, none, not a single, other than what was found in this shoe and the suicide note, Zero. not a single shred of research was Zilch. found. Nada. Yeah, and we, gone. Yeah, and we've been talking about, I mean, yeah, he was an investig- investigatory journalist. We've been saying that he's had these papers. But, but we haven't really said, investigated? We haven't really said what he's investigating. What's he investigating? In short, he was trying to expose, in his in his mind, a sea of covert operative super surveillance software and transnational spies, linking them all together to form something that he referred to as the octopus. Right? So he had spent about a year. That's better. Four. Yeah. Sp- spent about a year he, 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 <clears throat> starting the case. And the case started when he met a main man named William Hamilton, who owned a software company called Insla. And according to Hamilton, uh, his company developed a piece of software called Promise, or which stands for Prosecutors Management Information System. And it would gather and organize paperwork from law enforcement and the court system, uh, make it easier to search and whatnot, blah, blah, blah. Much, it's it like was, at the time revolutionary. You got to remember, this is a time where Boy, this is fucking. Court this is basically is, having those three fucking psychics and minor, Minority Report pooping out pool balls and tell you what's going yeah. on. <laughs> Who's murdering who? Yeah, <laughs> shoot out ping pong balls. <laughs> Murder. Yeah. So he met this guy William oh. Hamilton, and Hamilton was a former employee at the Justice Department, and he claimed that the government stole this program. And was using it without his permission. Who he he was the creator is what well, he was what he said. I, I that's not quite it. I think more what the allegations are that the government began to use it. They signed a three year term with him. They loved it. The government's like, hey, we love this. This is good. We're going to widespread across you know across the United States. We're going to use it. And then in the second in the second year of this three year term. The government just stopped paying their bills. The United States government just stopped paying Insla. So they stole it, right? They stole began it. stealing it. And so Insla, you know, being the United States federal government, that's their, that's their big money. That's their ticket. Have to file bankruptcy, right? Because they're ruined because the United States government is just not paying the bills. And this is and literally this time. This is literally a mom and pop fucking software company. Yeah, like there, there's two people that own this. It's like grassroots. It's super easy for them so, to go fucking bankrupt. And in this, in the like, as they're going bankrupt because the United States government is just being like, yeah, we're using the software and we're not paying you. They find out that the Canadian government is also using Insla, yet the Canadian government didn't buy it, didn't lease it, didn't it. buy it from them, and they're using their proprietary software. But you know what? Here's the thing. Napster's a bitch, man. 90s, right? That's where they got the Canadian government. This is well, Napster. Be- this is well before Napster. 
Kazaa, you know what I mean? Well, LimeWire, FrostWire. Your preview play. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.